In 2014, a Helix user explored the memories of a Templar in the service of Jacques de Molay. The memory takes place on 13th of October 1307, in the Temple in Paris, which was being attacked by the forces of King Philip the Fair. Alerted by the ensuing battle, Jacques tasked his advisor to hide the Sword of Eden and the Codex Pater Intellectus. Running through the battlefield, the advisor took notice of an assassin, Thomas de Cornelion. After a sword fight with Thomas, the advisor returned the sword and codex to their resting place in the temple. As the advisor left the room, he noticed Jack had been captured. However, before he could rescue the Grand Master, the advisor was stopped by Thomas, who killed him with his hidden blade. Seven years later, Jack and his affiliates were set to be burned at the stake. Before perishing, Jack cursed the Pope and King overseeing his execution. With his death, the Templar Order was publicly disbanded. Suddenly, the memory was interrupted by the transmission of an assassin, who introduced herself as Bishop. She explained to them that they were being manipulated by Abstergo to sift through memories, following which she asked them to experience an unsequenced set of Arno Dorian's memories as an introduction to the Assassins and Templars. In 1776, eight-year-old Arno accompanied his father, Charles Dorian, on a business trip in the Palace of Versailles. While waiting for his father on a chair, Arno saw a girl running away and followed her. After Arno stole an apple for her, the girl introduced herself as Elise de la Serre. Suddenly, a commotion was heard. Arno followed the crowd and found his father's body laid on the floor. Charles Dorian was assassinated, leaving his son an orphan under the care of Templar Grand Master Francois de la Serre. Thirteen years later, Arno was at de la Serre estate, performing chores when de la Serre left in a carriage. Then, an exhausted Templar messenger, Perrault, caught up to Arno, having a letter needed to be urgently delivered to de la Serre. Arno took the letter and chased after the carriage, but failed to deliver the message to Francois de la Serre. After sliding the letter under de la Serre's office door, Arno then learned of a party at the Palace of Versailles where Elise was. Arno put on a suit and infiltrated the palace to find Elise. After sharing a romantic moment with her, Arno and Elise were then interrupted by a guard, and Elise told Arno to leave. On his way out, Arno spotted de la Serre, who fell to the ground, dead. Charles Gabriel Sever came from behind a wall and then framed Arno for the murder. Arno was taken by the guards and subsequently imprisoned in the Bastille. Arno found himself in a cell with four other men. After his first night in prison, he saw one of the prisoners holding his father's watch and tried to take it back. The prisoner handed Arno a wooden training sword and the two dueled. Arno called his attention to a wall painted with unusual symbols. The prisoner acknowledged Arno's eagle vision and after learning his surname, introduced himself as Pierre Belek, revealing that his late father was an assassin before returning the watch and offering to train Arno. Two months later, Belek and Arno were still training, while a great commotion was taking place outside. The Bastille was stormed by revolutionaries, and Belek and Arno took the opportunity to escape. Days later, he made his way to the De La Serre estate in search of Elise, who assumed he was responsible for her father's death. Elise handed Arno the letter he was supposed to deliver to her father, warning him of betrayal from someone within the Templar Order. After learning about his unwitting role in his stepfather's death, Arno decided to seek out the Assassin Brotherhood. After finding Belek and meeting the Assassin Council, Arno was inducted into the Parisian Brotherhood of Assassins. Bishop then showed up and offered the user a chance to join the Assassins. Once they accepted, Bishop showed them footage of Abstergo's Phoenix project, explaining that the Templars were searching for sages both in the present and the past to map the precursor genome. As Arno had encountered a sage at some point during his lifetime, Bishop was hoping to have the Initiate find the sage's remains before Abstergo, through Arno's memories. Bishop then allowed the Initiate to proceed. Arno rendezvoused with Belek on a rooftop near the concierge for his last exercise before becoming a fully-fledged assassin, where he learned that Sever would be at Notre Dame the next day. Arno was tasked with finding and assassinating Sever. Arno infiltrated the church, entered the confessional impersonating Sever's accomplice, de Cheneau, and in order to gain information from Sever. Having gained the necessary information, Arno thrust his arm through the lattice and stabbed Sever in the throat with his hidden blade, killing the Templar. Arno then viewed Sever's memories and learned the identity of his partner in crime on the night of de la Serre's murder, the Roy de Thune. Arno informed the assassin council of his discovery, where he was given the phantom blade and tasked with finding and assassinating the Roy de Thune. Arno left and investigated a commotion where he found a beggar having his foot forcibly amputated by the Roy de Thune's lieutenant, Aloy de Touche. 
Just as he was about to intervene, Donatien Alphonse Francois, Marquis de Sade, advised him against it, suggesting instead that Arnaud followed Latouche to his master. Arnaud found and interrogated him, discovering the hiding place of the Roy de Thune. Arnaud entered the sewers and started making his way towards the Roy de Thune. Arnaud managed to assassinate his target, and with the Roy de Thune dead, de Sade took over his position immediately. He then informed Arnaud that Francois Thomas Germain had crafted the pin used to kill Francois de la Serre. The council tasked Arno with investigating the silversmith, Germain. Arno infiltrated the workshop and found Germain, who claimed being held against his will for months. Arno escorted Germain outside, who admitted to Arno that he made the pin for a man named Trechien Lafreniere. While investigating Lafreniere, Arno destroyed his gunpowder supply and discovered where to find his target. Arno arrived at the Holy Innocent Cemetery to assassinate Lafreniere, the man he believed to be responsible for Francois de la Serre's death. Arno assassinated Lafreniere and through his memories he discovered that Lafreniere was planning to attack the Hotel de Beauvais in force. Arno returned to the council and informed them of Lafreniere's involvement in the De La Serre murder. The council tasked Arno with finding and assassinating Lafreniere, but he informed them that he already did, much to their indignation. Although initially scolded for his assassination of Lafreniere, Arno was allowed to continue his investigation. Arno reached the hotel. By eavesdropping on a Templar meeting, he learned of a planned ambush on Elise. Arno reunited with Elise and rescued her from the Templar ambush. He then instructed her to meet him at the Café Teatre. Arno met with Elise at the Café Teatre and convinced her to join forces with the Brotherhood to find her father's killer. Elise was brought before the Assassin Council, although she was unable to land an agreement with them. While Mirabeau convened with the council, Elise informed Arno that Germain was exiled from the Templar Order for his radical views and heretical notion about Jacques de Molay. <coughs> Investigating Germain's residence, they discovered him to be her father's killer. While planning to inform Mirabeau of Germain's true identity, Arno and Elise found him murdered. After an investigation, they deduced that the killer was likely an assassin. Arno followed a leader to the Saint Chapelle and discovered Mirabeau's killer to be Belek. He had done this because he strongly believed that no peace could be achieved between the assassins and the Templars, and that purging the Brotherhood to remake it into a stronger organization was a good thing. Belek attempted to convince Arno to join his cause, but Arno refused, and forced into a duel, Arno reluctantly killed his former mentor. Arno met with the Assassin Council for his next assignment. The Council learned that Mirabeau was in contact with the King and tasks Arno to find the letters he sent before they're made public. Arno infiltrated the Tuileries Palace, and while disposing of Mirabeau's correspondence with King Louis, Arno met artillery officer Napoleon Bonaparte. After escaping Tuileries with him, Arno was able to gain his assistance in tracking down Captain Frédéric Rouy. Arno reached the Grand Châtelet, where Rouy and his men were executing prisoners. Arno tracked down and assassinated Rouy. Through his memories, he learned of a Templar plot to starve France and incite riots, led by a woman named Marie Levesque. Arno met with Elise at Le Marais and informed her of Levesque's plan. Stealing a set of orders from the captain of a grain barge, he discovered that Levesque would be a Luxembourg palace. Arno infiltrated the palace and assassinated Levesque. Through her memories, he learned of a plot to execute King Louis, undertaken by Louis-Michel Le Pelletier. Arno and Elise escaped the area in a hot air balloon. They then shared a night of passion. Seeking to find and kill Le Pelletier, Arno and Elise met with the Marquis de Sade at the Louvre, who informed them that Le Pelletier could be found at the Palais Royal. Arno tracked down and assassinated Le Pelletier. Through his memories, he learned that Germain would be present at King Louis's execution the following morning. At King Louis's execution, Arno met with Elise near the Palais de Révolution, intending to assassinate Germain. Louis XVI was executed, and Arno failed to assassinate Germain since he refused to let Elise take on the Grand Master's bodyguards alone. This caused her to question his devotion to avenging her father. As a result, she cut off contact with Arno. As Arno returned to the assassin hideout, he was stopped by two assassins and escorted to the council. Due to Arno defying orders to abandon Germain's investigation and his obsession for revenge, the council expelled Arno from the Brotherhood. Months later, he had moved back to the De La Serre estate in Versailles and returned drinking. While attempting to find his missing watch, Elise found him and convinced him to resume their mission. As Aloy Latouche hosted executions at the town square, Arno set out to rid Versailles of his terror over the town. Arno assassinated Latouche and, through his memories, he learned that Maximilien de Robespierre, leader of the Reign of Terror, was Germain's final conspirator. Arno and Elise drove back to Paris, seeking to find Germain through Robespierre at the Festival of Supreme Being. They managed to plant incriminating evidence on several people, discrediting Robespierre and turning popular opinion against him. 
Once Jermaine abandoned him, it would be easy to acquire information from Robespierre. Robespierre was arrested, but he broke free of his imprisonment and sought shelter in the last vestiges of his allies in France. Arnaud and Elise found and interrogated Robespierre, learning that Germain was hiding in the temple. Robespierre was arrested again and sent to be executed the following morning. Arnaud and Elise infiltrated the temple to find Germain. Upon Arnaud locating him, Germain used the Sword of Eden to fire a burst of electricity at him. After a fight at the temple's central tower, Germain fled to the catacombs. Arno entered the catacombs and found the entrance to the Templar vault. Elise then appeared and distracted Germain, allowing Arno to attack. Elise then fought Germain alone, but the sword's power was rendered unstable. The sword exploded, killing Elise and mortally wounding Germain in the process. In an act of grief, Arno slowly assassinated Germain by stabbing him in the throat with his hidden blade. In a vision following his death, Germain explained his struggle of being a sage and his beliefs in Delamay's and Elise's unfortunate deaths. As Germain finally succumbed to his wounds, Arno carried Elise's body out from the temple, leaving behind Germain's lifeless body inside. Sometime later, Arno, as a master assassin, walked through Paris and reflected on his own beliefs about the creed not being a grant of permission to do as he would, but as a warning that everybody is responsible for their actions and its consequences. In 1808, Arno entered the temple once more, accompanied by Napoleon. There, they discovered Germain's corpse, which had long since decayed, and buried his skeletal remains in the catacombs of Paris. This left Bishop satisfied, as the bones would be difficult for Abstergo to locate, and were likely too degraded for DNA extraction anyway. Bishop praised the initiate for their work and promised to contact them again. Thank you for watching that everybody. If you liked this video and you want to know more Assassin's Creed lore and backstory and recaps and everything, then subscribe to Jam Punch, because I'm going to be releasing a brand new Assassin's Creed video every single week. My name is George, this is Jam Punch, and I will see you next time. Thank you.